Welcome to video number five of the WebSphere Portal 8.5 installation and cluster configuration instructional series. In this video we're going to cover installing and configuring the deployment manager. Let's start out on our deployment manager node. So far on our deployment manager we've previously installed installation manager and extracted the Portal 8.5 installation files. Here as you can see in the video we're adding the setup repository.config file to the list of repositories in IBM Installation Manager. For the Deployment Manager install, we're only going to be installing a standalone WAS instance and the required Java SDK. So in this page here, we're going to go ahead and select IBM Application Server Network Deployment and the WebSphere Java SDK. In the next page, IBM Installation Manager is going to prompt us to install the required WebSphere Application Server network deployment fixes. You can go ahead and accept the license agreements and specify where you would like your IAM shared directory to be. Here you can also specify where you would like your app server to be installed. For the purposes of our video and our deployment man manager installation, we're basically leaving all of the selections and options set as default in the IBM installation manager. While this instance of WAS is installing, we're going to go ahead and go back to our primary node and start up our server 1 so we can access our configuration wizard. To access the configuration wizard in our browser, we're going to go to our host name, colon, 10200, forward slash, IBM, forward slash, wizard. In the welcome screen of our configuration wizard, we're going to go ahead and click on set up a cluster. And step number two will be create a deployment manager. We're going to go ahead and leave the first three settings as default and click next. We're going to specify that the deployment manager is on a remote server and click next. And on this third page, it asks for our WebSphere application server host name. And this is going to be the host name of your re remote deployment manager. So in our case, it'll be dmgrnode.rtp.rally.ibm.com. Go ahead and click on next. This next screen is the screen for the deployment manager information. First, it asks for the deployment manager hostname again, which is dmgrnode.rtp.rally.ibm.com. For the purposes here, we're going to go ahead and leave all of those entries default. We're going to go ahead and use the WebSphere application server administrator username and password. So all three of the steps here are manual steps that need to be run on the deployment manager. So we're going to go ahead and download the configuration scripts and copy those over to our deployment manager. You can see here on the screen that the installation of the WAS instance and the Java SDK is still running. Now that we have the workflow instance scripts copied over from the primary node to the deployment manager node, let's go ahead and extract those files. In the extracted files, there's a create deployment manager, manager file. It's an HTML file. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and review the steps to create the deployment manager. Step one of this file is a manual step. 
It instructs you to basically install the WAS instance on your Deployment Manager node and download the scripts from the configuration wizard. It also says to rename the Create Remote Deployment Manager Profile script with the .bat extension. I'm going to go ahead and rename both of the scripts in that directory with the .bat extension. It looks like the WAS instance has finished installing, so we're going to go ahead and finish that and close IBM Installation Manager. The final step from the configuration wizard is to run the Create Remote Deployment Manager profile script. Running this first script, which is the Create Remote Deployment Manager profile script, it's going to go ahead and use Manage Profiles with the WebSphere Application Server and create a Deployment Manager profile. When this script completes, you will get a message that says Success, Profile Deployment Manager 01 now exists. In this video, I'm basically going to do a second check to make sure that that script ran correctly. I'm going to go to the DMGR profile directory and make sure that it's there. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start that deployment manager and pull it up in the browser and make sure it renders correctly. To access the Deployment Manager in our browser, we're going to go ahead and use our host name, colon 9060, slash IBM, slash console. As you can see, the Deployment Manager pulls up successfully and looks as it should. At this point, we've completed step one, and we're going to go ahead and move forward with step number two. Step number two, the first step, is to stop the deployment manager. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go over to our primary node and copy the files for deployment manager directory. To our deployment manager node. Step three asks that we expand the files for Deployment Manager into the installation root directory of the Deployment Manager. So that would be our WebSphere app server directory. On our primary node, we're going to navigate to the IBM WebSphere portal server directory. This is the directory that contains the files that need to be copied to the Deployment Manager. We can just put those in a temp location. Really anywhere on the Deployment Manager node is OK. And as I said previously, we're going to go ahead and extract them into the WebSphere app server directory. Step number four is situational and only needs to be completed if you did not create your Deployment Manager profile in the default location of App Server Profiles DMGR01. We're going to go ahead and extract those files into the App Server root directory.
To finish up step number two, we're going to go ahead and start the deployment manager again. After the deployment manager has been started again, we can move on with step number three, which is the manual step of augmenting the deployment manager profile. For this step, we're going to go ahead and open up the script in a text editor and see exactly what the script's doing and run these ma steps manually. So as you can see, the first step in this script is to start the manager. We've already done that. So the second step is run from the app server bin directory and it's a manage profiles command to augment the deployment manager profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the app server bin directory. And we're going to go ahead and run this script manually. Okay, so that's the success message that will get profile augmentation is succeeded. And the next step will be to restart the deployment manager with a stop manager command and a start manager command. At this point, we've comp completed step three of augmenting the P deployment manager profile. So we're going to pull it up in the browser to verify that it's still working. It looks like everything is working successfully. So we're going to go ahead and log out and navigate back to our primary node. Here in the configuration wizard, we're going to review the steps that we've taken and mark each step complete. So at this point we finished the configuration and installation of the deployment manager profile. That is the end of video number five. Video number six of the series will cover federating and clustering the primary node to the deployment manager. I hope you're enjoying the series and that it's helping you out. Thanks for watching.